Would you like to know about governance, risk management, and compliance? If so, this video is for you. In this video, we're going to discuss GRC, or Governance, Risk Management, and Compliance. We're going to discuss it from, say, a security architecture and enterprise architecture perspective. And we're going to talk about what is governance, risk, and compliance. And then after that, uh, we're realistically speaking going to talk about why we need to uh, govern the organization, manage risks properly, and adhere to compliance rationale. So to begin, what is governance, uh, risk management, and compliance? And I'm going to start with governance. And governance is going to be the foundation. Uh, governance is going to describe how decisions are made inside of the organization, who is accountable for making decisions in that organization, and how we prioritize initiatives according to business strategy. So a very strong governance structure is going to ensure that the business, the IT, the security, all what's going on aligns with the organization's needs to deliverable, measurable outcomes. And I'll give you some practices. I'll give you a practice in, say, security, and I'll give you an example, say, in enterprise architecture to kind of tie the governance piece together. So let's say we're in security, and we have a bank, and the bank will establish a governance structure and a steering committee that includes maybe its executives, maybe its IT leaders, maybe its risk leaders. And this group will uh, set, say, a policy for if we're going to adopt the cloud, how may we adopt the cloud, uh, how we would retain data, how we would classify data, what kind of data is deemed, for example, need to, needs to be highly secured. And it will determine how the organization applies and aligns their security decisions with uh, the needs of the business and also regulatory environment. So that's the governance piece. Now, in enterprise architecture, it could be an architecture review board that's used to evaluate, say, new technology investments and ensure that the organization's technology spending aligns with the organization's business needs, uh, simplifies things, for, for example, and make sure there's no shadow IT, that kind of thing. So that's the concept behind governance governance. Now, risk management is about risk reducing risks to acceptable levels. And it goes beyond just identifying problems. Risk management is about looking at the organization's assets, anticipating threats to the assets and or the business, and then being able to look at all the options we have and say, this may be a good option to protect against this, or this may be another. An example, do we send risk to an insurance company like a third party provider? Do we mitigate the risk itself? Could be an example of something like that. Do we have something in place to mitigate the risk of a natural disaster or what have you? So think risk management is how do we help that organization manage risks? And if organizations are effective at managing risk, they can reduce their risk to an acceptable level. For example, a security architect may look at the organization's security architecture. They may look at vulnerabilities in the system and the types of threats that exist and uh, determine what the risk is and what might need to be done to uh, mitigate that risk. Uh, or it could be in business operations, for example, especially for us enterprise architects, where it might be a global manufacturer of something that's looking to mitigate the risks of a supply chain being dependent on a single country or two countries in case there was a disruption of some kind, like, say, geopolitical instability or a huge natural disaster. So that's the kind of risk mitigation we're typically talking about. Now, compliance is making sure we abide by the laws and the rules and the regulations that govern our industries. For example, in healthcare, we might have, say, HIPAA. In Europe, we may have, say, GDPR. So it's making sure that businesses and the organizations follow the rules. So it's making sure they don't get fined for doing things. It's re it protects the consumer. It's, it restores trust. It protects trust in the company. So that's typically what we're dealing with when it comes to compliance. Now, if you, for example, think of a financial firm or a publicly traded firm, like a bank that implemented Sarbanes-Oxley controls to make sure that there's nothing funny going on, that's an example. It could be also a date in data protection, for example, a retailer that may be handling a customer's data has to make sure they apply with all GDPR rules and regulations, maybe by anonym, anonymizing data and uh, implementing customer consent mechanisms, making sure the data doesn't leave, say, the European Union, that type of thing, adopting a data protection officer. So that's kind of what we're trying to do with GRC, and that's what it is. So why does it matter so much? So if we have a good governance structure in place, 
We can look at, say, any technology decision or any business decision and evaluate it by the key stakeholders that will know if that decision will be good for the business or bad for the business. So it all goes about aligning people, processes, and technology when we think in architecture, making sure that organization runs smoother. Now, this also gives us speed, too, because we can create guardrails, which is what's acceptable and what's not acceptable. And that way, we can set things that are acceptable and almost make them pre-approved and get them done much quicker. So it also protects organizations from regulatory challenges because it's making sure that the people that understand the regulatory challenges are there to make sure that organization is compliant. It's making sure that organization understands uh, its risks and can properly manage that risk, say the key strategic needs of that organization. And basically it builds business resilience by design because we have to look at that business. We have to perform a business impact analysis. We have to understand what disruptions to any part of the system would be. So it gives us a much better perspective to do this. It helps us control costs because people won't be spending money on things that may or may not have any value on the business because the steering community can evaluate it and say, yes, we can pay for it, or yeah, and even yes, is this good for us? So it really creates a due diligence environment. And that's why architects are going to be critical to any of these, whether it be a security architect, whether it be a cloud architect, an enterprise architect, we're always going to be there. But that's also why we have business leaders and business executives and key stakeholders here, because we all are there to align the organization's needs, the organization's people, the organization's processes, and the organization's technology. So in this video, we covered what is governance, what is risk management, and what is clients. So we went all into GRC, and we also talked about why it actually matters. If you'd like to become a cloud architect or a security architect or an enterprise architect or an AI architect, we run free weekly webinars where we'll go over what we do in the architecture role, talk about every skill you'll need, talk about how to stand out and how to talk about getting your first job and these webinars are completely free. You can register for them. They are in the description of this video. It'll be the How to Become an Architect webinar. I encourage you to join it and it's completely free. While you're all, and you can register from the description of this video, but we'll also talk and I'll answer any career questions you may have on these free webinars. While you're in the description of this video, there's so many free things in there to help you. Free guides on how to win the interview, guides on how to become, say, uh, an, a cloud architect or an AI architect, for example. Lots of free resources to assist you in your career. So sign up for them. They'll be emailed to you while you're in the description of this video. Now, if you enjoyed this video, please give it a like, subscribe to our channel, and hit the bell to be notified of new videos to help you in your cloud architect career, security architect career, enterprise architect career, or AI architect career. And uh, this is Mike Gibbs uh, signing off for now, and I look forward to seeing you in another video or one of our free architecture webinars. Take care, everyone.